Welcome to Power Pivot video number five. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Power Pivot 5 Source Tables in Excel, click on the link below the video. Hey, actually, in the last video, at the end of the last video, I said video number five, this video would be multiple sources imported into Power Pivot comprehensive example. No, no, that's video number six. In video number five, this video, I want to show you how to keep your data in Excel, different tables on each sheet, and then import these tables into a different workbook and have the data model and the reporting system in that other workbook. Now the tables in this workbook are the same we've been using in the last few example. Here's product and price. Over here we have sales rep and region. And over here we have our transaction table with date, sales rep, products, discount, and unit. So obviously if we're going to calculate revenue, we're going to need to do lookups or relationships to get the price from the products tables. And if we're going to summarize by region, we're going to have to do lookups or relationships to get region. Now, when you're keeping your data in Excel workbook, we want to keep each table on a separate sheet. And of course, we have to convert these tables to proper Excel tables. So I'm going to click in a single cell, Control T to create that table, Enter. Now we want to name this table because it'll show up over in our data model, and we want a proper name. I could go up to Design and then name it up here, but I'm going to use the keyboard. Alt JTA, and that jumps up here. And I'm going to call this D product. Now I'm also going to highlight this Control C and then Enter, because I want to come down here and double click that sheet name and Control V. Now we don't really need to name this sheet, but I like to keep everything well named so there's no confusion. Now we come over here, Control T, Enter, Alt JTA, D sales rep. Now I'm going to highlight this too. Control C, Enter. Come down here, double click, Control V, Enter. Over to the next sheet, Control T, Enter, Alt J T A, F transactions. Copy, Enter. Double click, Control V, Enter. So now we have our one, two, three tables. Now it's very important if you're keeping your data in Excel to not put anything over to the side or anywhere else on any of these worksheets. Now I'm actually going to make a mistake here. I'm going to write um, input, input, enter, 0 0.05, enter. Now you don't want to do this. I'm doing this so we can make a mistake. Now I want to go over to a second workbook you can download called Power Pivot 5 Data Modeling Model and Report. Before we import into this workbook, we want to close this source file. I'm going to close it. All right, now over here, we can go to Power Pivot and Manage Data Model to import. I'm going to use the keyboard Alt-B-M. Up in the Get External Data, we can select from other sources. We saw this same a series of dialog boxes in video one. There's all sorts of cool things, databases, different sources, text files, X files, access. We're going to select Excel, click Next. Use the first row as column headers. Click Browse. We're going to find our 05 source tables in Excel. Double click. We're going to go down to Next. And now here's all three tables. I'm going to select all of them. And you don't want to come down and click Finish. You want to check each one. All right, so ready? I'm going to Preview and Filter. And sure enough, this shows up because we had something in the sheet. So you really want to, over in your Excel sheets, create the table and don't put anything else on the sheets. Now, there's a couple ways we could deal with this. We can uncheck this, and it will actually remember. If you ever need to refresh because you changed data here, it'll remember this. But watch this. I'm going to click Cancel, click Cancel, click Cancel through all of that. And I'm going to go over and open this up. So I'm going to open up this workbook and delete this, right? Control S, Alt F4. Now I'm over here, Alt B M. Come over from other sources down to Excel. Next, first row, click Browse, double click the source, click Next. I'm going to select all the tables and I'm going to select this one, Preview and Filter. 
and it's not there. So you definitely want to check each table. Now in our next video, we'll see how to filter out columns and even filter out values. But here we're going to select that table's fine. Click OK. I'm going to check the next one, Preview and Filter. That one's fine. Click OK. Preview and Filter. That one's fine too. Click OK. And now when we click Finish, boom, one, two, three tables. I'm going to click Close. Our data model is starting to take shape. One, two, three tables. Now, once we have imported our tables, we can further work on our data model by going to Diagram View. Here's our fact table. We talked about the different star schemas and keeping star schemas where you keep all of your dimension or lookup tables surrounding your transaction or fact table. Now, we need to build relationships. Remember, this products table has exactly one instance of each product and then a price. Over here, we have many products because this is our transaction table. So when we click and drag to create a relationship, we're creating a one-to-many relationship. That will replace VLOOKUP. This relationship will help us get the price over to this table to calculate our revenue. Click Sales Rep. I drag down to Sales Rep. Primary key, foreign key. If we click on that, we can see. right? Primary just means unique value in this table. This region field we will use as a filter or criteria in our row area of the pivot table. We won't actually use it in a formula. But both relationships for adding criteria or filter to the pivot table with a relationship or for using a particular number like price in a formula we can do that in Power Pivot Diagram View. All right, so this helps us build our data model. We're going to go back over to Data View. Now, as we mentioned in the first video, you can change column widths, but it is not necessary. I'm going to go to each sheet. I like to change the column widths. I like to see it. Transactions, the date, you know, they come in always as date and times, but you can format it up here. Change the column width. You can even sort. All of this is just for your own eyeballs. You do not need to do it. The formulas and everything will work just fine. I better change the column width up here. Now, in video number one, we saw the same three tables. And we created a calculated column to calculate net revenue based on the price from the product table and discount and units. Now, in this video, I actually want to show you how to an alternative to the calculate column. But I'm going to create it, the calculated column first so we can compare and contrast. All right, so you ready? We're going to come double click the Add column. And I'm going to call this Net Revenue. Enter. And this is a calculated column. As soon as we type an equal sign, which is the assignment operator, it jumps up there. And we're going to need round. And we're going to need to look up, not using VLOOKUP, but related. Click down here on the products and just click on price. And it puts my product name and field name in square brackets. I'm going to close parentheses. That jumps me back to the other table. Times in parentheses 1 minus FT to get the fact table. Down arrow, down arrow to discount. Tab, close parentheses, times. FT, and I'm going to down arrow all the way to units. Now, I mentioned in video one, I'm using the convention of putting all table names and field names in square brackets anytime I'm using a field in a formula, even if I'm in the source table, because this formula would work with just units. But to keep everything clean, because later when we do calculated fields and we start using them in other formulas, we will only use square brackets for those. We'll see that in upcoming videos comma 2 for the round, close parentheses. And as soon as I hit Enter, it populates all the way down. I'm even going to add some English uh, currency there. We could use this to make our pivot table. But I want to show you how to do the same type of calculation down here in Calculated Field. Now, the funny thing is, is this exact same formula is going to be used we just have to throw it in a special function called SUMX. Now, when we do calculated fields or measures, they understand filter context. 
checks. That means when you drop the formula in the pivot table, it understands the criteria or conditions in the row and column area. This is row context. If I were to take this formula and copy it, escape, and just try to use it down here, it needs row context to calculate. Each row has to see that majestic butte get the price. Each row has to get the discount and the number of units. It can only do that in a calculated column because of row context. There are, however, a few functions that understand row context when you're creating calculated fields. The x functions like sumx and countx. So we're going to create a calculated field using sumx and our exact same formula. All right, so calculated field or measured, you click down on the measure grid. As soon as we start typing, it'll jump up to the formula bar. I'm going to type total net revenue colon equal sign is our assignment operator. And if I control V right now, that will not work because this is a calculated field. It doesn't understand row context. But we can force it by putting it in sum x. We're going to have to tell the sum x, however, which table should it understand the row context from. So I'm going to type ft tab. Comma gives us the expression. Now, this table right here, that tells the sum x function for this expression which table it needs to go through and iterate to do all of the row calculations. Now, this table has 10,000 rows, right? So now, sum x understands row context. We tell it the table. Now that formula that usually sits in a calculated column can iterate through every row in the table we gave it and calculate the answer. Not only that, but this formula understands the relationships between tables. That related function has no problem, even though it's iterating through the F transaction table. Because there's a relationship, it has no problem for each row to go get the correct price. All right, that's pretty amazing. Enter. Now I'm going to expand the column here. And we want to add some number formatting. Remember, this is a portable formula. We'll be able to use it anywhere. Any pivot table in this workbook, any other calculated field, or even column for that matter. All right, now the difference between using a calculated column and a calculated field, I'm, I'm not that smart about this. But I have read a few books. And I actually posted a question about this very formula to a blog. And Marco Russo, the power pivot master, answered. And he basically said, hey, look, this calculated column, anytime you create a calculated column, all of those values are stored in the columnar database. If you only have a few unique values, remember, that columnar database stores only those unique values. But if there's lots of unique values, then that columnar database gets bigger and bigger. And those values, since it's an in-memory database, are stored in RAM. Down here, even though it iterates through the whole table and gets all the values to add, it's not stored anywhere like in RAM. It only calculates when you drop it into the pivot table or pivot the pivot table, meaning it needs processing power when you drop it into the pivot table or pivot. This calculated column and all calculated columns are actually calculated when you create them and when you refresh the data. This formula is calculated when you move it in the pivot table. Not stored in RAM, yes stored in RAM. So when do you use one or the other? On a smaller data set, it doesn't matter at all. On larger data sets, then figuring out how many unique values there are and which one will optimize the model would be something you'd have to do. All right, now let's go ahead and use this in a pivot table. I'm going to go ahead and click a pivot table. I'm not going to put it on a new sheet. I'm going to say Existing Sheet, click the Collapse button, and A1, click OK, click OK. All right, now we have are three tables, and check this out. That net revenue is the calculated column. This is the calculated field. Now, you would want to choose one or the other and then stick with that. Now, when I 
go up and I'm going to drag the region field. That's the report we've been making the last few videos. And now I'm going to drag this calculated column. Remember, that's a formula down to the values areas. And instantly, that formula understands the conditions or criteria I dropped into the row area. If I were to drag a different criteria from products down to columns, Instantly, every one of these formulas senses right here it's Majestic Butte in the south. So that one total formula now has been given two conditions. Those conditions actually filter the underlying data set for this calculation, and then it gives you your answer. This one right here is looking at quad and the south. Now, that's pretty amazing for us to be able to build a formula, drop it into a pivot table, and have that formula update based on the criteria. Okay, I'm going to move this over to the row. You could move it up to the filter, too. You could add it as a slicer. So I'm going to drag this off. So there we have our end report, region by revenue. Now, in this video, we imported one, two, three tables from an Excel workbook, an external workbook. We went ahead and built some relationships. And we built a calculated column and a calculated field. All stuff that we've done to create our data model to get an end report. Now, in our next video, video number six, we'll import from multiple sources and then start a more comprehensive example with calendar tables and all sorts of calculated fields and calculated columns. All right, we'll see you next video.